What's up everybody? Today we're walking through leveling up and gearing up in Eureka Pyros, the third and my favorite field operation zone in Final Fantasy XIV, Stormblood. There are timestamps in the description below to reference specific topics, but if it's your first time going through Eureka, I'd recommend watching the full guide. Thanks for checking this out. Let's get started. At this point, hopefully you've watched the previous videos in the series, have a basic understanding of leveling and crystal grinding strategies presented there, and have completed at least your first relic weapon through the Pago step. One new set of things to buy before getting started on the next zone will be logograms. I'd suggest a stack of conceptual and fundamental logograms, as well as about two dozen curative and mitigative logograms, which I'll explain how to use in just a moment. For trial players, just like everything else in Eureka, this is probably going to be unbelievably tedious for you because starting in this zone, everything is immeasurably more difficult without the special actions. But hey, you've made it this far, so I'm sure you'll be fine continuing your self-loathing inspired non-gear and market board enhanced journey. Anyways, once the rest of you have got the logograms, head to Rodney at Pier 1 Kugane to enter Eureka Pyros, and we'll walk through this leg of the journey. Just a reminder, if you've made it this far in the guide series but haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing that now. It helps me out a ton and makes sure you get a heads up when the next video comes out, so I really appreciate it. Just like in the guides from the previous zones, the background footage throughout this video shows the path I take and things that I kill as I grind levels throughout the zone. The grinding portion of the Pyrus experience is incredibly short, so there's not going to be very much b-roll in this guide. As soon as you zone in, and before we unleash you to continue murdering and pillaging, attune to the Etherite, talk to Kryle, and complete a bunch of story quests. So, do you remember how Pagos was straightforward but tedious? Pyros is anything but tedious, because it introduces a wildly flexible new mechanic called Logos Actions at the end of this first chain of quest interactions. Logos Actions are customizable duty actions available inside of Eureka Pyros, and later Hydatos. The process of creating the actions is easily the worst part of the content design in Eureka because of how tedious and energy dependent it is, but let me try to explain it in as simple and a concise way as possible. There are nine different types of logogram items that can be acquired in different ways, including from bunny fate coffers, specific sprites, fate bosses, warped lock boxes, or adaptations. These logograms can be sold or traded, which can be a great source of income as a seller, or a shortcut you use to skip the grind and blast through more content as a buyer. To actually convert the logograms to actions, you'll need to appraise them by interacting with Drake while they're in your inventory. They don't convert one-to-one -to, -one to specific logo actions though. Remember, this is Eureka, so it needs to have that classic, convoluted, mostly unexplained by the game feeling to it. Those initial nine logogram item types are actually converted into 28 different memes, monemas, nemes? Nemi. These are stored in this special inventory tray, are no longer able to be sold or traded, and cap at 200 each. These are still not directly usable though. You then need to go to the Logos Manipulator and combine the nemes to create the final usable Logos Actions, of which there are 56 unique options. Logos Actions are stored in this other tray and will not be destroyed upon leaving the instance. Clicking on an action in this tray will activate it from the tray and apply the action to your duty action slot. Any action activated will overwrite any previous action in that slot. Wisdom effects are removed if the associated Logos action is written, but other buffs are persistent. Anything activated to your duty action slot is cleared out upon exiting the instance. Simple, right? Anyways, the Eureka Tracker is a great reference guide for logograms as well, and you can play around with all of these and learn a lot of it as you go, but there are an absurd amount of combinations and possibilities out there. For the start of your leveling grind here in Pyros, I would make a Protect and a Shell to make yourself a little more sturdy for these first few levels. Once you've created these and applied the buffs, then make a couple of blood baths using the Neem 
combination of two Wisdom of the Martialists and one Cure L. Pop one into your duty action bar, and let's go relieve some enemies of their burdens. The grind part of your Pyro's journey is only about six elemental levels long, and that's broken up into two three-level segments. From 35 to 38, you'll want to grind here, between the base and the bunny fig to the east, killing adaptation or mutation enemies one level higher than you in mass pulls along the way. AoE them down using Bloodbath and Eureka Potions while maintaining your chains. Avoid the temptation to be distracted by the bunny fate right next to you, because you'll have plenty of time to farm this later once nothing in this south zone can aggro you anymore. Once you're 38, immediately return to the base and complete the level 38 quest, which will unlock a second duty action slot that will both significantly enhance and complicate your experience going forward. On the plus side, you can now use a wisdom and an active action, spell, or ability at the same time, which you'll see shortly makes you essentially invincible. On the downside, you'll start to burn through gill like an NBA player burns through baby mamas, because some of the more advanced combinations are very expensive, and combining 4 plus Mimis on one plate has a really high rate of failure that just deletes them when they fail. While completing the level 38 quests, don't forget to attune to the Etherites at the Dragon Star Observatory and the Firing Chamber to facilitate your travels later in the zone. Create a plate with Wisdom of the Plate Bearer and Bloodbath L, and then unleash your newfound God Mode power on the enemies to the east of the Bunny Fate until you get to level 41. If you're a tank, do the same thing but with Martialist and Bloodbath. At this point, you want to go back to town and learn a new leveling technique that involves getting naked and going wild. Get ready because the next five to seven levels are going to go so fast and feel so good, your eyes may just roll back in your head a little bit. What you want to make now is an action called Reflect Hell, using a combination of Protect, Wisdom of the Ordained, and Shell. This will take any magic cast at you, and instead of it hitting you, it hits the caster. On a side note, this goes for enemies and other players, so no one can cast on you while you're doing this. Make two or three of these, and then head all the way to the northwest corner of the map. Grab the etherite point in the northwest corner of the map, Carbonatite Quarry. Once you arrive there, you'll want to get naked and dance with the pure white flames. I promise, this isn't some sort of ritualistic sacrifice. I typically make a gear set with low level weapon and no armor to quickly swap off everything but you can do this manually too. Now, assign Reflect to your duty action and make the magic happen. Reflect will aggro the pure white flames, which is a good thing and a bad thing. You want Reflect to already be active before you aggro the first one, because the first attack they throw at you will hit before your Reflect buff applies and it'll kill you. To avoid this, pop Reflect while you're standing by the Aetherite and then run over to them and reapply it to start the pull. I typically reapply with about 2 seconds left on the buff each time to avoid server lag spikes getting me killed. Try to stagger the pulls so that you maintain chain bonus and the EXP will fly in. You're almost certainly going to die, maybe even a couple times while you're doing this, but it really doesn't matter. You're right next to the etherite, so someone may be able to quickly raise you in a busy instance, but a lot of times I don't even bother to wait because the experience comes in so fast it's actually going to slow down your progress waiting for someone to come get you up. Anyways, repeat this for about 20 to 30 minutes and you should be somewhere between level 46 and 48. You can start farming fates in this range because you'll need to complete about 30 of them to gather the crystals required to complete a weapon. The associated experience granted from that many fates should level you from around level 46 up to 50. I would grab a new plate bearer bloodbath combo plate and start by prepping Blessath, Elthers, Iris, and Lame Bricks at 46 because those will provide level appropriate targets for experience grinding as well. Once you hit level 49, you want to keep an eye out for heat waves since you need to kill the level 50 fate boss in Thessalia twice to get the five Penthesilia's flames to complete your weapon. Now, just like in other zones, if the weather is not cooperating, you can buy flames from the Expedition Bird Watcher for 50 Pyros Crystals each. There are several other quests that you likely blew right past, but you can complete the level 40, 45, and 50 quests 
once you finish leveling up through the zone. Some of the spots you have to access are protected by high-level enemies, including more sleeping dragons, so approach with caution. Keeping Plate Bearer active while you're doing this will provide you with a bit of extra safety as you wrap up this zone. To finish up the weapon step for this zone, you'll need 650 Pyros Crystals, 5 Penthesilea's Flames, but you'll also need to create 30 different unique Logos actions. Reference the Eureka Tracker to determine how to make combinations you haven't made yet to hit that requirement. You may need to buy or farm more Logograms to get this complete, and this is a fairly tedious step, but at least with the Tracker, it's fairly easy. Once you finish your first Pyros weapon, you'll get the option to gather light in Pyros. But wait, you might say, I already got my shiny new weapon. Why is it telling me to farm light now? You can use light in Pyros to upgrade the substats on your weapon. These can be rerolled indefinitely, so you can stay here grinding out the perfect substats for your five-year-old relic until the end of time. More realistically though, this is something that you'll only end up doing if you really go all in min-maxing your Eureka gear build, so I wouldn't worry too much about it at this time. I'll look to cover the details of this system in a future guide, but for now, just know that the mechanics of generating and converting light to crystals is the same here as it was in Pagos. The forge here is in the north of the map, and any re-rolling you choose to do needs to happen before starting the steps in the next zone, or once the full relic is completed at the end of the final zone. One other item acquired in this zone that I'd suggest prioritizing is the Elemental Armor. Once you've completed the first 50 Logos actions, you can purchase the base versions of Elemental Armor for your left side gear slots. They cost 40 Pyros Crystals per piece and can be upgraded in the next zone a couple of times to grant additional Elemental Affinity bonus. As a side note, the body pieces are not necessary to purchase if you've already acquired a Kirin's Asode as a tank melee or ranged DPS. And for healers and magic DPS players, you can skip both the head and body pieces due to the Vermilion Cloak. That is, of course, unless you need it for glam because you're planning to RP as the personification of a Red Mage's Limit Break 3 or something. The last thing to note in this guide is your module wheel. In Animos, you got the initial 5 Magicite. And then that's what you had through the leveling process of Pagos and now Pyros. In Pyros though, there's a vendor that will give you a sixth Magicite to place in your board if you turn in three ultra rare fate boss drops to him in camp. The required items are the Lame Bricks' dice from Lame Bricks Strike Box, the Ying Yang's tissue from Ying Yang, and the Skull's Claw from Skull. These can be farmed over time or purchased, but are really only for folks that are heavily invested in a long-term concert engagement in Eureka. You can still only align a max of five Magicite per element on your wheel, but adding a sixth Magicite will allow for configurations that put points into both offense and defense, most commonly maxing out offensive alignment with a minor boost to survivability. I've done this on multiple characters, so I'm not saying to not do it, but do your own cost-benefit analysis here before investing a ton of gil or time into getting these. For anyone that wants to learn more about all the cool stuff you can collect from Eureka Pyros in addition to your relic weapon or gear, we'll be discussing the lockboxes, bunny fates, heat warped lockboxes, and other fate drops in another video. So that should be just about everything you need to know to get through Pyros. I hope this guide was super helpful for you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I look forward to seeing you out there in Eureka Pyros and in our final zone, Eureka Hydatos.